Hey everybody, my name is Gus, and today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, Apocalypse Rising 2 furniture and how we implement that furniture into our houses for the game. So, there's a lot of things that uh, I could start with, but I think the most important thing is first to understand how loot and furniture uh, sort of interacts with one another. So, you're about to see something pretty cool here. Here is a, a shortened version of Apocalypse Rising 2's furniture palette. There's a lot of things here, but there's actually about, this is probably only 50% of, of what we have so far, but mm, I don't want to show off everything. So this is a, a nice little demo. And here you'll see uh, a series of loot spawners. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. But um, we have a house here. We have a bunch of furniture. And there's a different, you know, there's different kinds of furniture. There's containers, there's static furniture, uh, and then there's sort of a mix of both. Um, the first thing you need to understand about loot spawners is loot can both appear in a furniture object and outside of a furniture object. Um, obviously, if it's in the object, uh, in the game, you'll basically open up the furniture and, and look inside of it, or, or you'll get to see inside of it and take what you want from it. Whereas if loot spawns in the world, all you have to do is walk up to it and pick it up. So I'm gonna demonstrate how this works. Um, you'll wanna be watching the explorer over here. Uh, ignore this, this is just a little tool I have. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all these really nice loot spawners. These are Apocalypse Rising 2's current, like pre-alpha loot spawners. You'll notice there's quite a few of them, and a lot of them represent various different aspects of loot uh, across the whole game. Anything from civilian attachments, which could be like a makeshift, you know, suppressor, to uh, utility military, which can be like a GPS or um, tools, perhaps. There's a lot of things here. There's even building materials, even though we don't have any building materials yet. <laughs> but uh, I assure you that it's very likely that this arrangement is going to change. So let's start by demonstrating how loot works. So over here we have two little pieces of furniture. This one, inside of it you can see there's these two values, backpack civilian, clothing civilian. These represent uh, those backpack civilian, clothing civilian spawners over there. This means that this particular uh, piece of furniture, you know, has those two spawners inside of it. This one over here uh, has nothing inside of it, but we can fix it. We're going to open up this loot spawner, grab the clothing civilian thing, and paste that in. So now this cabinet has a civilian clothing spawner inside of it. What we can also do, though, is take these little nodes, as they're called, and stack them in on the shelves. And now, uh, w once this is you know implemented into a house, not only will you be able to open this um, piece of furniture and check inside of it, but you'll also see items spawn on the shelves. So that's how loot works in a nutshell. But now we're going to use our tools, use our big pallet of furniture here, and uh, fill up this house. So let's take a walk through first and see what it looks like inside. You can see we have a big open area here. This is likely a living room, dining room area. We have a sort of island counter kind of thing going on. And this is the kitchen. This is the back door leading outside. Just like a set of stairs right there. And then over here we have the staircase leading up. Uh, APOC 2 houses aren't like real houses. There's not things like um, utility areas or like laundry machines, washing machines. We don't have bathrooms. We're not going to bother with that. We're focusing on a sort of, you know, gamey, arcadey approach to having a world and building houses. So up here is pretty much the bedroom, whereas normally there'd be like a hallway and then, you know, separate rooms or whatever. You pretty much just walk right into the bedroom in this house. Whoa. And then over here we have uh, a sort of bonus room. So we're going to figure out where all this loot is going to go, and we're going to start right away. First thing we're going to do is start with the kitchen. So I'm going to select this thing, use my fancy little plug-in to quickly and easily place the fridge. And then we're going to use Roblox's uh, tool here to make sure it's rotated the right way. And we're going to set the stud grid and gently move that into place. And there's the fridge. Now inside that fridge, it has two consumable civilian spawners. Now this is um, this means that you know it's going to spawn civilian food. 
uh, anything from cans of beans to, I guess, a cooked steak, uh, I suppose. But that kind of thing, those kinds of details, we're not really sure about. It might change in the future. So, you know, take everything you see here with the grain. But there's that. Now we're going to place our sink. So we're going to come in here, place that. Make sure it's flipped around the right way. Oh, I accidentally grabbed two things there. And now we're going to just set that in place. Now in the sink, we have a consumable civilian and a medical civilian spawner. Um, that's pretty common in APOC. It's pretty common that uh, uh, the sinks will spawn medical supplies. Because um, if you'll, uh, well, if you're aware, it's very likely that APOC won't go crazy with food healing, uh, APOC 2. Rather. So you will certainly get uh, health by eating food, but I don't think it's going to be as crazy as most people are used to. So there's that. Now we're going to place this little cabinet here, and it seems to be that they're always rotated the wrong way, so I guess I'll just keep that in mind. For some reason, my uh, hotkeys are messing with me there. Okay, cool. Don't want to do that, and we're going to move that in place. It's beautiful. Now we're going to take this big-ass cabinet right here and put that, or a cupboard, rather, and I'm just hitting hotkeys all over the place. Don't mind my incessant uh, tapping here and we're just gonna bump that in place and drag that up to the ceiling it's beautiful and all these cabinets or cupboards there they're very much full of consumable spawners so pretty boring but you know maybe in the future we'll have uh, more diverse loot it's still very much you know prototype uh, there's there's a lot that uh, is likely to change between now and even the alpha so don't uh, don't go crazy. It's very, very standard. So we're going to put that in place there and build that. So we have a nice little kitchen area now. Um, and, you know, I'm a little disappointed that there's so many consumable spawners there. So we're going to go ahead and just spruce up one of those spawners by adding something like just a utility. Civilian up in that cupboard there. Now it has two spawners, so that's cool. Now we're going to do the living room area. So we're going to grab this couch. First thing we're going to do is place it right over here. It's a nice little spot. And we're going to rotate that around because it's always in the wrong freaking wrong way. And we're going to off, offset it just a little bit, but we want to make sure it's not bleeding into the wall. And that is done. So now we're going to grab our little TV stand over here. You can see there's quite a diverse set of objects. Anything from uh, bookshelves and little uh, cupboards and, and things like that to safes, garbage cans, tables, beds, all kinds of good stuff. So we are going to have fun placing this little TV stand. I feel like Bob Ross, you know, happy little accidents. Look at that TV stand. Oh, it's beautiful. Why can't I? Oh, I'm having a... There we go. There's uh, still a couple of bugs with um, the placement tools. So if you see me like doing nothing, I'm probably trying to figure out why something isn't working properly. Also, I apologize for my microphone cutting out occasionally. Um, sometimes when I have to grab things, it disconnects just slightly. Uh, so you'll just kind of have to infer what I'm saying sometimes. Hopefully I'll fix that in the next video. So we're gonna spruce it up a little bit by putting a nice little civilian clothing spawner right in there. Normally I actually grab the selection tool and just kind of drag that. So that's cool. So now that uh, couch is going to spawn a clothing item on it. Now this is a living room area so we're going to want some general storage probably. We'll go ahead and grab this bookshelf and place it right in there. Nice. And now I'm going to align it to the wall uh, and that's all set up there. Now I assure you, the upstairs is where the most interesting part's going to happen. Um, I don't like to put a lot of valuable loot, you know, right on the first floor. It doesn't really make sense for people to store their guns and stuff in their kitchen. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much aware that uh, this may not be the most interesting moment, but trust me, I think that you'll be pleased to check out what I'm going to do a little bit later. But this is a, a good demonstration. It's showing off how how our tools kind of work and how we're sitting here, you know, making 
making this stuff look nice. I'm gonna tuck those t stools in there. It looks pretty good. We got that shelf, so let's put some things on that shelf. It's always good to start with a little bit of ammo. Oh, grab another one. So we're gonna grab that, place that right on the top shelf there. And then we're gonna grab utility military and spice things up a little bit. Bring that over here and put that on the bottom shelf. A little bit of staggered there. We want something in the corner, so I think I'm gonna go for this chest. That looks nice. And we're gonna put that right there. And then just kinda spin it a little bit. We don't want it to look too crazy. Um, but this is a little close, so we're just going to bump that over a little bit. And then switch back, widen that gap a little bit, just kind of tuck it, tuck it in that corner, make it look at home. Now this chest has a backpack civilian and a clothing civilian. I'm going to swap out the clothing civilian and we're going to replace it with a nice hat. Whoa. Oh, that's the wrong. Not, we don't want accessory military. We don't want like helmets and stuff to spawn in there. Instead, we do civilian accessory. I keep deselect. I keep going outside to deselect because I, I'm, it's just a bad habit. I, I, I can just click on the house to deselect things. So I'll have to get used to that. But there's a garbage can. We're going to place this garbage can right here, actually. That looks like a good spot. And then we can just kind of settle that in there, in that little corner. Garbage cans, by default, have consumables in them. Um, in my previous video, I actually talked about how I hid a, an attachment spawner behind a garbage can. But today, that's not going to be the case. However, this room is looking pretty good. There's a couple of things here, but this table's a little bare, so maybe we can put something on that. There's nothing wrong with ammo. Ammo is a really good all-around loot spawner, I think. And, you know, you may be thinking, wow, this looks like there's a lot of loot here. I mean, there's, you know, clothing there. There's some military crap there. There's ammo. There's more stuff in there. There's a lot of objects in here, and you're right. The thing is that all of these spawners are simply designed to offer the chance of spawning something. I don't think it's likely that everything is going to spawn all at once. And, you know, we're definitely going to have to balance some things. Um, it's very possible that a lot of our initial ideas are not going to happen right away. Uh, we might uh, change some stuff in the future. We might go and make certain things like really rare or really common. Um, but we're going to find out in the coming months for Apocalypse Rising 2. I place this nice little bookshelf. Just trying to center it. I don't want it to be too crazy. So that's a beautiful little bookshelf, and we're going to put something cool in there. Why not? Let's just hide a little attachment spawner. If the player is aware, they might pay attention to that. But it's going to be tucked away in that little corner. So now we're going to do the best part, which is the bedrooms. The bedrooms are where everybody stores all their naughty stuff, like guns. So we're going to really make this bedroom awesome. So let's go ahead and reposition this bed. And now we're going to just kind of move it off to the side. I don't care if the bed is perfectly up against the wall. I'm going to grab this little end table over here and place it right there. And honestly, like every single time it's facing the wrong direction, it's hilarious. And that does not have to be up against the wall either. That looks pretty good. Just bump that over a little bit. So now we're going to want something for that end table. You know what? This guy is this guy is a military man. Let's make it special. Let's go ahead and grab this little guy and put that right there. That'll be a nice little helmet right on the table there. And now we're going to do like a dresser. I really like this open dresser because it's a combination of both uh, you know, container and open air sort of spawning. 
And that's cool. I think that it's really cool to see loot sometimes instead of just having to loot a container. In that case, accessory civilian, clothing civilian, that's perfect. I don't have any problem with that. But I do want to go ahead and just put an ammo military. Um, and that is going to just bump up, take it up a notch. We're basically introducing the player to the idea that maybe this room has some value in it. And then we might put something in that corner, but for now we're going to really focus on this room. This is the money. This is the money room right here. I'm going to make this room kind of the, the star of the show for this particular house. We've got this beautiful L-shaped desk we're putting in place. Really flatten it up against the wall there. Make sure that it's not bleeding into the wall because we don't want that. Yep, perfect. And now we're going to grab our little chair down here and place that like so. And, uh, you know, in the future, um, it's, it's very possible that you'll be able to sit in chairs. But for the alpha, it's highly unlikely. I don't think that we're going to really caring about people sitting in chairs. So for now, we're just going to leave that tucked away, kind of just aesthetically, you know, it's, it's there. It's nice. And now we're going to grab a big boy military firearm. And we are going to go ahead and place that right on the table there. Now, the cool thing about firearm spawners is that they're going to spawn a firearm with ammunition for the most part. Um, and that is good because we don't want players to pick up a firearm <laughs> with no ammo. Uh, this is something Daisy does all the time and it drives me crazy. It's so stupid. It's just, I mean, like, it's realistic, blah, blah, blah. It's a hardcore game. APOC isn't a hardcore game. You know, it's, it's very arcadey. It's the kind of game you can play in five minutes and die and hop into it again. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of experience that I want to provide. But we're going to use this big bookshelf. This is a really nice spot for it. I'm going to put that right there. Actually, this, we want it to center it just a little bit. Put it up against the wall there, and maybe, I'm gonna use my hotkeys, maybe uh, put it in the center there, it looks pretty nice. Now we're talking about some, some big stuff. Let's go ahead and take this safe. And let's put it right here. Now, I intentionally left some space back there I really like hiding things. I think it's fun for the players to, you know, get rewarded for exploring. And in this case, um, having a little bit of space behind that safe allows us to do something kind of sneaky. I'm going to come over here and take this toolbox. And we are going to place it right back there. Now, if you walk into this room, oh, you can't even see it. Let's fix that. If you walk into this room, the, you can kind of see something behind there, but I want to make it a little, not like too obvious, but definitely I want people to have an opportunity to, to be observant and be rewarded for being observant. So we're going to select these parts and we are going to make this safe, or, or sorry, this uh, tool. Nice dull red. And then we're going to take. make it a little bit darker. Now you can see that little toolbox back there. We don't want to make it too obvious, like I said, so we're going to bump this over just a little bit. And now it's just a little shimmer of something back there. So now we're talking loot. We've got this nice thing right here. We've got this by default, the safe spawns, an ammo civilian and a firearm civilian. I like that. I like having a big military ammo or military, you know, firearm spawner here and then having a firearm civilian there because chances are, you know, the military spawner might not show up. So it's good to have sort of more than one opportunity for the player to loot a house and get a gun. So I like that. But what I am going to do is beef it up. I'm going to put another military ammo spawner in that safe. Now we're talking. Okay, what else can we do? Good idea to put a little bit of medical civilian, maybe on that bookshelf. 
That looks nice. What else can we put in there? How about something like utility civilian? It's good to just have multiples of uh, certain loot items that are like kind of important, kind of common. Things like ammo, uh, health, you know, um, utilities, right? Tools, uh, clothing, right? It's good to have multiples of, of different things. I'm gonna put a consumables military on there because you know this guy's a, he's a military man. Whoever lives here. That's another thing. It's good to think of level design, think of buildings. Um, from a storytelling perspective, like what kind of person lives in this house? Why does this person have, you know, um, certain colors for their furniture? Or why does this person have certain guns? Or why does this person have, you know, a helmet on his table? Well, maybe he's active, active, active yeah. well, maybe he's active duty or something like that, you know. So we like to think about these things because it kind of helps us um, really tell a cool story or, or make the world feel more like alive. So by painting the picture that this guy is, you know, military, that's, that's cool. So we're going to put another ammo spawner there, why not? And now, what are we going to do about that little back thing? Well, I'm thinking military medical is really valuable. It's something that, you know, is probably going to be pretty rare. So hiding that in that little tool chest, I like that. I think that that's really neat. There's more space on this table here, so I'm wondering what else we can put there. Um, now, we don't want to go crazy. We don't want to make this house, you know, legitimately have a chance of spawning every single thing. We got an attachment. We got a military firearm, civilian firearm, ammo from both uh, aspects. We don't have any melee weapons, though. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That might be a good option. Why not? Maybe he's got, like, a hatchet or a crowbar or something right next to his, you know, big firearm. It's not too bad. So, this is looking pretty good. <clears throat> We've got a nice little back room here. We've got a little secret hidey hole. Um, maybe I can put something on this bed. Looking, I'm not seeing anything too crazy, but we can put another backpack spawner right in the corner over here. Um, that'll be nice, because you're walking upstairs, and you know, you're not gonna see anything here, and if by chance that does spawn, That'll be cool. You'll go right for it. You know, you'll kind of look around then and see, oh man, there's a helmet there. You know, and I could also put something in here. Uh, it looks like it does have ammo in it, but I'll just leave that utility civilian there. It's always good to have duplicates. Uh, we've already checked that one. This table, it does not spawn anything. So we're not gonna worry about that. And it's looking pretty good. So let's just double check. Let's take a walk through here. Let's see. In here, got some accessories, backpack, blah, 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 okay. Food, 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 medical, uh, medical in here, right? Food in there. Sneaky, yep, sneaky ex uh, attachments, civilian right there. And then we got some military stuff. We have our gun here, another gun in there. Ammo pretty much all over the place, another medical stuff. This is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, uh, another important thing about the APOC 2 sort of housing system is this is one house variant. Now, we might not have a ton of variety house-wise. I mean, there might be some duplicate structures, but what really matters is the inside. When I say that this is like a particular house variant, I mean that we might actually have more than one of these kinds of houses. We might have a copy and we might say color it differently you know uh, we might go ahead and I'll just quickly select this stuff to demonstrate might make it like a nice you know teal or red or something like that right and then you know maybe take this and color that differently and now why not you know, that's, that's a different looking house. Obviously, we'd go crazy and we'd really make it look a lot different. But then inside of that house, variant two, for example, would be a completely different set of furniture. Maybe even different wall placement and like a different placement of the stairs and stuff like that. Maybe even different window placement, you know, and different kinds of doors, colors for all that stuff. You know, um, all of the furniture inside variant two would be completely different from variant one. Another thing we can do is also uh, we can recolor things, and they don't all have to be the same. So we can go and make this a nice, you know, pink, or maybe a nice. That looks great. There's definitely some other options. We can take these and make them, you know, sort of brass color instead. 
to kind of symbolize that. Uh, obviously, you know, it's worth messing around with. But we can also change things like cabinets too. And this isn't uh, limited by the game or anything. We can actually go into each house, and even though that these are instances of the furniture, the system allows us to change these colors and the game supports it. Which is really important because if we couldn't do that, you know, every single house would have the exact same colors of all the furniture and it would just be horrible. But no, that's not a limit for us. Whoops. That looks kind of interesting. And you know, it's just an example. But you can see the the sort of um, diversity that we can really achieve here. And of course, with having multiple house variants, um, these houses, like, when they're in the game, uh, house variant one might be in a particular town, you know, town one, and house variant two might be in town two. And maybe house variant one has a ton of military stuff like this one, but maybe house variant two has, you know, more clothing or, or maybe um, there's something uh, like some crates that have vehicle parts in them, for example. And those houses are going to, you know, they're going to stay in those locations. They're not going to be randomized or anything. So you'll be able to actually kind of identify uh, certain houses in certain areas that might stand out from others. Um, give you a really good example. Uh, there's actually a really cool warehouse um, that I built recently that I consider like a food warehouse. It has a ton of industrial freezers and it's got, you know, crates and crates of like military food and, you know, a lot of just food stuff. And it's really cool because if you recognize like where that location is um, and you remember that, you know, it might affect your gameplay um, because unlike APOC where you just have no idea what loot is going to spawn anywhere because there's no furniture, you know, um, in APOC 2, you'll be able to kind of memorize certain locations and, and what really stands out. Another idea that uh, the staff pitched recently was we could have a house like just like this one, variant two or variant three or whatever, and it could have a basement, you know, but the other houses, they wouldn't have a basement. You know, this one, this one could have a basement and it could, for example, have um, some spooky dungeon stuff down there. There's all kinds of cool stuff we can do, really. And uh, the variety that's possible is just amazing compared to Apocalypse Rising. Um, and if you're worried about detail, if you're worried about your performance, you should definitely check out, uh, maybe I'll link it in the description, you should definitely check out uh, a thread I made on the Reddit about, specifically about performance and all the things that we're doing to make sure that you can run the game just like, just as fast as anybody else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed checking out our cool diverse spawners. I hope you uh, liked, you know, a lot of the furniture here. And I hope you enjoyed watching me use a couple of our tools and demonstrate kind of how we loot houses out, what kind of things we're thinking of while we're doing it. And uh, I definitely plan to, to hopefully do some more videos like this or um, definitely some videos talking about Apocalypse Rising 2 in general or even just playing APOC and complaining about how uh, bad the game is. But I would love to hear what you think about what you'd like to see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.